Good morning, friends. I'm John Borrego, the interim priest at St. John's Episcopal Church in Norman, Oklahoma. And I will begin with the collect for this coming Sunday. O Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you, and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus went out and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who endeared bears fruit, and in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. The father of a friend of mine passed away a few months ago, and he left to his only son a farm that had been in the family since Oklahoma Territorial days in the 1890s. Now the dad had lived in uh, another part of the community, but he worked a huge garden out on this farm. And he used what some might consider modern methods to get his garden growing. Every year he would spray down this half acre plot with Roundup to kill off anything that might possibly be growing there. And then he would till it up to make sure that the soil that was below the ground had been brought up to the top of the ground. And then he would plant his vegetables, uh, fertilizing them with Monsanto's finest products. And he would usually get a pretty good crop. But the soil was completely sterile. It was like growing vegetables on the surface of Mars. There just wasn't anything in the soil that would nourish anything that grew up. Well, my friend, his son, has different ideas about what to do with this. Um, he's had the farm now uh, since about the first of the year, and he hasn't planted anything there. He brings grass clippings from his home and spreads them out. He allows whatever happens to grow there to come up. He spreads compost on it. And his hope is that in a couple of years, 
he will have good, rich soil there so that whatever he does plant there will take its nourishment from the earth as one might say God intended. Now this type of gardening takes patience and perseverance. And I think that that is what Jesus was trying to teach us in the parable of the sower. If you want quick results, scatter your seeds wherever they're going to go, and some may come up and some may not. But if you have patience and perseverance, and you make sure that your seed goes in to good soil, you will reap a great crop of grain. So that's a little bit about where we find ourselves in this strange world right now, isn't it? We are in a time where we need patience and perseverance. I don't know about you, but I thought back around, say, the 1st of March, that surely by the middle of July, all of this pandemic and COVID-19 business would be over with, the world would be back to normal, and yet here we are. Here in Oklahoma, as in many other places, the number of cases is climbing rather than diminishing. And uh, on my way over here and coming into the building here at St. John's, I was wearing my mask, which I thought I would have thrown away a long time ago. And we're still wondering what's going to happen with our children and grandchildren when it comes time for school at the end of August or into the fall. Will it be there or will it not? So, right now, we till the soil. We look at our lives and we examine ourselves and we ask ourselves what is important and significant to us. We deal with our loved ones that may be sharing our homes in ways that maybe we wouldn't have uh, just a few months ago. We look at what binds us together. And maybe we read and understand and look at not just the Holy Scriptures, but at other things that will teach us about the world. So, like my friend with his large garden patch on that farm north of Guthrie, Oklahoma, we give nourishment to the soil. We allow it to take in what it needs so that when life re-emerges, it can be abundant life, good life. As Jesus said, uh, it can yield 60-fold or 100-fold. So this is the opportunity we are offered now, to be good soil for the seed of God's Word to grow in. And now the blessing of God Almighty, world maker, pain bearer, giver of life, be with you always. And the peace of the Lord be always with you.